Hello, welcome back. I'd now like to do a quick example illustrating how to apply the circle criterion. So we're going to consider this, uh, this system illustrated here. Um, so we've got our, our truck that can slide from side to side and it's connected to the wall uh, by a spring and a damper. And we're just going to assume that it obeys this differential equation here. Um, so q double dot plus q dot plus q plus, and this is going to be our nonlinear function at each of q. And we don't know what this is, but we're going to suppose that we know that it lies within a sector where the slopes of the line in the sector are um, two thirds and one half. So h of q is some nonlinear function that passes through the origin. Um, so h of q is here. We don't know what it is, but the nonlinearity always lies within this sector here, so we're able to apply the circle criterion. So in order to apply the circle criterion um, to this system here, the first thing we have to do is put it in our standard form of a linear system in feedback with a nonlinearity. And so what's the best way to do that? Well, we could um, go through our process for um, putting nonlinear equations into our feedback form like we saw before. I'm going to show you just another way so you've got more um, tricks in your arsenal. So we're going to just call our nonlinear term here u. Um, and so if our nonlinear term here is equal to some input to our system, uh, this differential equation simplifies to q double dot plus q dot plus q plus u is equal to zero. And the key thing now is that this um, equation is linear, and the only catch is that the input u depends on q but in a nonlinear way, and this is where the feedback will come from. So this is going to be our linear equation, and then h of q will give us our feedback term. So if we linearize this, what do we get? Well, we could put it into our standard state space form and then simplify the transfer function c s minus i uh, um, s minus s i minus a inverse uh, times b. Or we could just take Laplace transforms and go uh, directly from this equation here. So that's what we're going to do. If we take Laplace transforms here, we get s squared q plus s q plus q plus u, where we've used capital letters to indicate the Laplace transforms of the corresponding variables. So capital U is the Laplace transform of u, and capital Q is the Laplace transform of small q. And if we rearrange this, uh, we get um, we get that q is equal to minus 1 over s squared plus s plus 1 u. So we have a linear term, and our nonlinear non equation is simply um, u is equal to h q. So what happens if we try and draw all of this in a block diagram? Well, we could uh, do something like this. So we typically use a negative feedback convention. And so this could be our signal u. It goes through this, it becomes minus. And here we have our linear transfer function, s squared plus s plus 1. And what does this give us? Well, this gives us q. So the, input, uh, the output of this transfer function is q. And that gives us the input to our nonlinearity, which is our function h of q. And what does h of q specify? h of q specifies u. So this is a feedback representation of this system of equations here. Our nonlinearity is sector bounded, so now we're ready to apply the circle criterion. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to draw a circle. And to draw our circle, we draw a picture of the complex plane. And then we draw over the minus 1 over k points, where the k's are the slopes of our two sectors. So we draw over the minus 1 over 2 thirds point, which is at minus 3 over 2. And we draw on the minus 1 over 1 half point, which is the minus 2 point. So we have these two uh, minus 1 over k points, and then we work out which case we're in to decide whether we have a circle uh, which we fill in, or we have a circle which we fill in the outside of. And remember, when both, um, both the, the k's were positive, we were in case 1. And case 1, well, this is our circle, but we fill in the inside. So, so we always draw the circle that connects our two 1 over k points 
um, in a way that's symmetric with respect to the real axis. And then we just have to work, in, work out whether we fit in the inside or the outside. So now we've done that, uh, we're ready to apply the circle criterion. And what does the circle criterion say? Well, it says we have to apply the Nyquist criterion, but with respect to this minus one over circle point rather than the minus one point, uh, like you would if um, you just had a linear feedback term. So what does that mean in our case? Well, our transfer function is um, one over s squared plus s plus one. So um, the first thing we need to do is work out how many unstable poles that we have. Uh, Actually, if you, if you get used to sort of uh, seeing these equations, we can immediately recognize that we have no unstable poles, but uh, why not um, actually just work that out? So uh, to find the poles, we need to find the solution is to s squared plus s plus one is equal to zero. And now to do this, uh, we could just use the quadratic formula and the poles are given by, um, so minus, b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, uh, which is equal to minus 1 plus or minus j square root of 3 all over 2. And we see that these uh, lie in the left half plane. So this system is stable. So in order to get stability through the Nyquist criterion, we need to make sure that we don't encircle the minus circle point. And so that means that our Nyquist diagram really has to lie somewhere over here. So all that remains now is to draw on the Nyquist diagram for our linear term here and make sure that it doesn't penetrate into this circle or make sure it doesn't encircle this circle in any way. Um, so how do we do that? Well, we typically draw on a few points uh, just to sort of get our bearings. So we need to draw the Nyquist diagram of, so we want to draw Nyquist of g is equal to 1 over s squared plus s plus 1, which after we sub substitute in j omega is equal to 1 over 1 minus omega squared plus j omega. So I've just set s is equal to g at j omega and rearranged a little bit. Now we just draw on a few points. Um, so we, we see if we set omega equal to 0, we have the point at 1, which might be here. Um, and then we could go away and we could draw on a few more points. Um, there's no, you'd have a calculator which would help you to do this. Um, but we also know this is a second order system, so it's going to come into the origin, something like that. And we might already be guessing that it's going to look something, the Nyquist plot might look something like this, which is easily going to be satisfying the Nyquist criterion with respect to this big minus uh, one point. Um, but now we've sort of got a little bit of a sketch, we could even go a step further and try and uh, prove that we never encircle this blob. Um, and one, one way we could do that, well, it looks like that this, this whole thing is going to lie inside some other circle. Um, and we could just try and find what's the smallest circle this thing stays inside. And if that radius is small enough, we could be sure it would never encircle, it would never get into this circle over here. So how do we, uh, so what we would like to find maybe is, um, we want to find gamma, which is always greater than or equal to um, the magnitude of g of j omega squared. So if this holds, then g of j omega will lie inside a circle of radius gamma. And as long as gamma is less than one and a half, then we can be sure the Nyquist diagram is never going to enter this circle here. Um, so how might we go about doing that? Well, we have to find the size of uh, g of j omega squared, and this is just equal to 1. And then we put the real part squared and the imaginary part squared. So we have the 1 minus omega squared squared plus omega squared. We expand this out and we get um, 1 minus omega squared plus omega to the 4. 
So how big does this get? Well, this is equal to, say, 1 over n of omega, where n of omega is equal to 1 minus omega squared plus omega 4. And we just want to find uh, the smallest val value of n of omega, so we can just differentiate with respect to omega and set this equal to 0. So d by d omega of n of omega, well, that's just equal to minus 2 omega plus omega cubed times 4. And this is equal to 2 omega, 2 omega squared minus 1. And so we see um, that the derivative is equal to 0 if omega is equal to 0 or if omega is equal to the square root of 1 half, uh, which would imply that n of omega is equal to 1 minus uh, 1 half plus a quarter, which is equal to 3 quarters. And so putting all of this together, we see that n of omega is always um, smaller than, no, it's always bigger than 3 quarters. So this quantity here, this is always less than 1 over 3 quarters, which is equal to 4 thirds. So from this we see that gamma is less than or equal to 2 over square root of 3, which is approximately equal to 1.2 or something like that, which is less than um, 1.5. So what we've shown through doing all of this is that the Nyquist diagram of G lies within a circle of radius something like 1.2, which is less than a half. And so the Nyquist diagram can never cut into this blob here. And so that means that when we apply the Nyquist criterion, we never encircle um, this circle here. So the Nyquist criterion holds for all minus 1 over k points in this circle, and therefore we've proved global asymptotic stability of this feedback loop through the circle criterion.